Just want to start off before I read the script that I just realised it is October right now, which is the Halloween season, so me covering a cryptid is very fitting for Halloween. Uh, so happy Halloween to all the American viewers watching this. Hello, hello, welcome to the video. As some of you might be aware, one thing I've talked a fair bit about on Discord and in community posts alongside live streams is Australian big cats. Large, feline animals that distort the Australian bush with multiple theories surrounding them and their identity. Some brush it all away as fake, others like me believe there's some shred of truth, and some believe very loony theories surrounding them. Panther in the Freezer is an entry on the iceberg I'm making for a reason. However, as those who read the book this video is based on, or just have a hobby of researching mystery cats are aware, there's more cryptid cats than just the Australian, American and British Black Panther sightings. This video is on that of the Spotted Lions, a mystery cat of Africa that has faded into obscurity in recent years, now seen as something from a long gone World War II era of history. Sightings of spotted lions have been reported starting all the way back in 1903 with Richard Meinertzagen, who you might recall from the lion video when talking about how much lions weigh. Later, two of these animals would be shot and skinned by Michael Trent in the early 1930s, one being female and the other a male, who had a very small mane. A short time after this, an adventurer by the name of Kenneth C. Gander Dower would take up great interest in the spotted lions and would go on multiple different expeditions to try and see one for himself. He'd even receive a letter from a woman asking why is he so interested in the spotted lions known commonly in the area. Gander Dower in 1937 would also publish a book titled The Spotted Lion, which documented his adventuring into Kenya's Aberdare range trying to find the animals. According to Shuka's book, The Spotted Lion also came with an appendix written by Reginald I. Pocock where he examined one of the skins of the two animals shot by Trent, the male one to be specific. Pocock would stay in it that not even the Natural History Museum's collection had anything comparable, describing it as being jaguar-like. Other people also described spotted and lions as being jaguar-like in appearance. Native people in the area also reportedly had their own name for them, Morosi. One hunter by the name of G. Hamilton Snowball spotted two of these cats, but before he could take aim and shoot them, they moved off. His assistants reportedly mumbled the word Morosi, and when asked if lions lived in the area, they said that no, lions don't live in the Aberdare ranges of Kenya, but Morosis do. This is contrary to a man by the name of B.V. Richardson, who claimed that even though he never ventured into the same areas as Gandar Dower did, he never heard the locals say anything of spotted lions and argued that the natives were willing to make up stories to impress their western employers. Shuka would also receive an email in 1999 regarding an undocumented spotted lion skin separate from those Trent had shot. According to the emailer, his father had worked as a movie maker and hunter in Africa for nearly 28 years and had owned a spotted lion skin. Sadly, it was reportedly stolen by male male terrorists. As for the question of what exactly are or were spotted lions, five theories are included in Shuka's Mystery Cats of the World Revisited when talking about the subject. The first two are that of a trick of the light or a native invention. These can both be put to rest for the simple reason that Trent's skins exist. Of course, there are chances that some Morosi sightings are just mistaken identity, but Trent's skins show that not all sightings are solely for that reason. The third theory speculated is that of freak individuals, and this is what I remember mentioning in my lion video also, where it's believed some freak individuals are what's behind the sightings. Lions can sometimes end up with a mutation that makes them keep the spots they have as a cub into adulthood, but there are some problems. First off, the mane of the spotted lion is very weakly developed for a male lion. Some might argue that mane development varies from region to region, depending on the overall health of the lion and the climate, colder climates tending to have much larger manes compared to hotter climates. However, according to mountainforecast.com, it's actually pretty cool in the Aberdares ranges. So out of anything, the mane should be pretty well developed, unless it's the case that these animals are in a very unhealthy state of being. The mutation theory also doesn't explain their small size, although it should be kept in mind lions can vary from region to region in terms of size. The second last theory Shuka goes over in his book is that of Leopins, which are leopard lion hybrids intermediate in size between both parent animals, have a weakly developed mane, and to me at least look very jaguar-like, especially the head. However, the problem here is that, well, there's a very low chance of these two species of cats breeding in the wild for starters. I mean, you just need to hop on YouTube and you can find multiple videos of aggression between both species. 
Another crippling factor is that these hybrids aren't exactly fertile animals. Very, very few hybrids of cats have managed to raise viable offspring, and that, plus the chances of them even occurring in the wild being very low, makes it hard to use them as the explanation of the morosi. According to Shuka's book, natives in North Africa state leopard lion hybrids do occur in the wild, but according to them, they are much more powerful than what is said of the Morosi, so I think it's best we move on from this theory of Leopins being behind it. Considering how common spotted lions are said to be where they are found also, it appears there's more than just a couple freak Leopins roaming around. The final theory Shuka includes is that of a separate taxonomic form. The Morosi represents, according to him, multiple different traits that are adaptations for forest life. A weakly developed mane and a smaller size, spotted coloration and much more, including sightings from other regions of Africa as well. There's already multiple different kinds of forest and plains version of African animals, such as Cape Buffalo and African Elephant, with both of them having smaller species or subspecies developed for forest life. Taking this into account, I think I agree more with the idea of a possible new taxonomic form than the other possible theories. We have physical evidence of these animals in the form of trench skins mentioned earlier also, so trying to argue by saying that there's no physical evidence isn't a viable option for skeptics. If there's one thing I know about cats from researching them via reading books about them in paleontology, cryptozoology and zoology, it's that they are very sneaky animals by nature and they can be extremely sneaky when given cover. The only thing that bugs me about the spotted lines is one part Shuka states in the history he gives of sightings of these animals, where he says that they've declined in popularity and, when remembered, are thought of more so as something from the World War II era. If this is the case, this does get me a little worried about spotted lions, since a similar thing has happened with the Queensland tiger in Australia, as will be covered in future videos about Australian cryptozoology. Saving that for another time, hopefully you enjoyed this video and made sure to like and subscribe. As you may have guessed from checking the sources in the description, this video is based on Carl Schuker's 2020 book, Mystery Cats of the World Revisited. I originally also wanted to use a couple other sources I came across online, but since I'm focusing primarily on the iceberg now, it's best to make only smaller, faster and easier videos on other subjects than stuff like my lion and stegosaurus videos. I haven't read too much of Shuka's book, but I do recommend getting it if you can. It's a good book and it has a lot of stuff on all sorts of mystery cats, so if you know of a local mystery cat in your area, it might be in there or something similar to it will be at least. Anyway, hopefully you liked and subscribed and I'll see you next time I upload.